Hey everyone, David Chen here. Boy, it was a huge week in the world of entertainment news last week. And I want to talk all about it because I think we're going to look back on this week as potentially an inflection point, like a critical uh, point in time where things started to shift even more rapidly than they already have been shifting. So let's get into it, all right? This week, Warner Media, HBO Max, they announced that Warner Media's entire 2021 theatrical slate uh, was going to be moving to HBO Max for an exclusive 30-day streaming window, as well as being released into theaters throughout the course of 2021. Now, we'd heard earlier that Wonder Woman was going to be one of these films uh, that's coming out on December 25th, uh, theoretically in theaters and also on HBO Max. But now the entire 2021 slate is going to be on HBO Max, available to stream to your house. Let's talk about what the movies are. There are some really exciting movies on this list. I'm going to list them. Dune, The Matrix 4, In the Heights, Godzilla vs. Kong, The Suicide Squad, Space Jam and New Legacy, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. That's one movie. The Little Things, Judas and the Black Messiah, Tom and Jerry, Mortal Kombat, Those Who Wish Me Dead, Reminiscence, Malignant, The Many Saints of Newark, King Richard, and Cry Macho. All 17 movies coming to HBO Max in 2021. If you have HBO Max, you'll be able to stream them when they come out. I've been thinking a lot about this news over the course of the last few days, and I think there's going to be pretty big implications for four distinct parties. So I'm going to talk about what the implications are, and I would love to hear what you think. Are you excited for these movies coming home to HBO Max? Do you think it's going to destroy the theatrical experience? What movie are you most psyched about? Make sure you hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think. Okay, the four groups that are most impacted, I think, let's start with number one, that's going to be the movie theaters, obviously, uh, because... For many, many years, we have had what is called a, a fairly exclusive theatrical window where a big movie like Wonder Woman comes out and you can only see it in theaters before you can stream it uh, on your home devices. And obviously with coronavirus and the pandemic that has started to kind of erode where they've started releasing movies, you can buy them at home, you can rent them at home for 20 bucks, but nothing like this where now you'll be able to see them on a streaming service without any additional fee. Uh, and the movie theaters are not happy about that. Now, movie theaters are already facing a lot of problems. Uh, AMC and Regal, the two biggest theater chains in the country, were already facing industry forces like declining ticket sales, which is a thing that was happening in the United States over the course of the last couple of years. That was pre-COVID. Now with COVID, you have news headlines like AMC might run out of cash in early 2021. So they are in a really, really tough spot. And in some ways, this news made their position even more challenging. Now, I think 2021 is going to be really weird regardless, right? I mean, there is news of a potential vaccine on the way, but it's going to take a long time for hundreds of millions of vaccine doses to be distributed. And there's going to be a weird time period where some people have been vaccinated and other people haven't been. And so who knows what the theatrical environment would have been in 2021 anyway without this. Like if Warner Brothers had stayed the course and started releasing movies in theaters, like who knows what it would have been like anyway. It, it might have also been very bad. But now that they've announced the entire slate, it's like, okay, these are huge movies that will no longer be theatrically exclusive. And Adam Aaron, the CEO of AMC, had some pretty strong thoughts about this uh, shortly after the news came out. He released a statement to the press saying, quote, clearly Warner Media intends to sacrifice a considerable portion of the profitability of its movie studio division and that of its production partners and filmmakers to subsidize its HBO Max startup. As for AMC, we will do all in our power to ensure that Warner does not do so at our expense. We will aggressively pursue economic terms that preserve our business, end quote. So a few things about this statement. Uh, first of all, a lot of uh, passive aggression in there. You know, it's not uh, the greatest look for uh, a CEO to kind of be coming out with guns blazing at a partner like that, uh, calling HBO Max a startup, looping in production partners and filmmakers saying all these people are affected, which we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they're clearly very upset. But at the same time, they basically have no cards to play in the situation. You know, This is something that's being done to them. They have very little leverage because theaters aren't a thing right now that can generate a lot of money for HBO Max or Warner Media or anyone else uh, because a lot of people are afraid to go out in theaters and that's in places where theaters are even open. Vast swaths of the country don't even allow theaters to be open right now. But from the HBO Max side, the head of HBO Max, Jason Kyler, uh, gave an interview to Peter Kafka over at Recode. I'm going to quote a 
couple times from the interview, probably during the course of this video. He said, quote, putting myself in the shoes of a theatrical distributor right now, one of the things I believe could be most helpful to them in their business is a steady stream of new great movies. And that's what we're stepping up to do, which, by the way, not everybody is stepping up to do, end quote. I mean, that's true. Uh, you know, movie theaters don't have a great stream of awesome movies right now, uh, and that's because a lot of movie studios are holding them back. They're waiting for uh, movie theaters to become a more viable option for release. And, and so it's true that they are giving them the movies. They are going to be releasing the movies in the theaters, but they're also going to be at home, and they're going to be available by HBO Max. So it's going to be a real interesting test to see whether or not people are actually going to be willing to go out into the movie theaters. Either way, yes, Warner Media is giving movies to movie theaters, but also kind of with a poison pill because they're streaming at home. So there's like very little reason for people to leave home to go see them. Now, you might treasure the movie going experience. And yes, that might be enough to get a couple million people out into theaters over the course of a, a movie's run. But uh, it's going to be a whole different game for movie theaters because they're going to be competing with not leaving, not spending money on parking, not spending on money on a babysitter, and not risking your life because you might be interacting with other people that have coronavirus. So that's the number one thing is movie theaters probably going to be negatively impacted by this, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. I will also say one other thing about movie theaters, which is that, yes, 2021 is going to be weird, but if and when movie theaters do get some power back, some economic power, some ability to get people into seats, some ability to generate revenue again, uh, who do you think they're going to want to deal with more after the pandemic is over? It's probably not going to be Warner Brothers. It's probably going to be people who did their best to respect the theatrical window during this extremely challenging time for them. So uh, I think this is going to impact the relationship between Warner Media and movie theaters like long into the future because no company has attempted something that disrupts the theatrical window this much until now. Let's talk about the second party that's going to be impacted by this, and that is HBO Max and Warner Media. Now, I think the launch of HBO Max so far has basically been a disaster. Uh, and let me clarify what I mean by that. I love HBO Max. I think it's one of the best streaming services out there. Uh, you got shows like Lovecraft Country, uh, The Outsider, How To with John Wilson. These are some really big swings, some great shows in there. And I consider it an essential streaming service for everyone. So when I say it's been a disaster, I'm not talking about how good the content has been. I am talking about how good their launch strategy has been. Uh, as a launch, it hasn't gone very well. In December of 2019, HBO had around 34.6 million subscribers. And this past summer, we've learned that it's roughly around like 39, 40 million at this point. So uh, they spent billions of dollars on content, buying up things like Friends and South Park and whatever the hell else is on there. And uh, they marketed this thing and all that, and they got a few million subscribers, which is not where they want to be. It's actually really bad when you compare it to something like Disney+, Plus, which uh, launched last fall and now has over 70 million subscribers. It's incredible growth, right? There's a lot of reasons why HBO Max hasn't grown super well. Brand confusion, like What's the difference between HBO and HBO Max and HBO Now and HBO Go? Have a regular consumer tell you that. I bet you they won't be able to. Uh, the fact that HBO Max until recently wasn't available on Amazon devices and still, as far as I as of this video, is not available on Roku devices, uh, which I think is one of the most popular platforms in the country. Uh, so a lot of reasons why it hasn't done well, uh, but it hasn't done well. And so their options have become limited, right? Like they need to decide, should we continue to invest in our theatrical film going and then do, using like conventional windows and moving them onto streaming and so on? Or do we put all the chips onto HBO Max? And the execs over at Warner Media and AT&T decided we're gonna put all the chips on HBO Max. This really is a bet the house, all in kind of situation. And you gotta admire the audacity of it because no one else is doing this right now. And whatever the result is, uh, it's gonna be a big one. Like it's, we're gonna feel the impact, I think, right? Either they're gonna just completely have obliterated their, uh, their kind of movie making business and just going straight to like streaming stuff, or 
uh, this is going to be the week where we said HBO Max, that's when they brought it all back, was when they put Dune and everything else onto that service. I think in the short term, HBO Max is going to become a must-have service. Like everyone's going to be talking about how you have to have HBO Max. If you want to be watching movies like Wonder Woman and The Matrix 4 and In the Heights, like you have to have HBO Max. So like it is quickly going to become, uh, I think, probably has the potential to become as big as Disney Plus because so many big movies are going to be on there. So many movies that people are going to be talking about. Um, movies like The Suicide Squad, you know what I mean? It's just, it's going to be a huge deal that you can watch these movies at home. It has instantly shot up to the top of people's list. If you're deciding between two or three streaming services and you have limited money, uh, HBO Max is going to be really strong in your consideration set. The question is, what is going to happen to HBO Max after 2021, right? Like, are they going to continue making big budget movies and putting them on the platform? Because let's say they try to go back to the way it was, which is going to be hard. Uh, what's going to happen when consumers used to paying $15 per month and seeing big budget movies like Dune no longer get to see them? Are they going to keep subscribing to HBO Max or are they going to let those subscriptions lapse? Who knows? We have no idea. No one's ever attempted anything like this, but uh, it's going to be interesting to kind of see what consumers perceive as the value of the service and how that plays out over the course of the next couple years uh, after 2021 in particular. The other big question about Warner Media long term is, are they going to continue being in the movie industry, right? Uh, there was a reorg and lots of layoffs at Warner Media this last year. They're basically putting all their resources into HBO Max, like their movie making division, their mo movie marketing division has been decimated. Uh, and also, by the way, in a typical movie, right, when you make a normal movie, a lot of producers and agents and actors, they receive what is often referred to as back-end points, which is like you make some amount of money based on how much box office uh, the movie makes. So if the movie does really big box office, you get a big chunk of that, right? A nice, healthy chunk of that. And of course, there is no box office anymore for this. So what is going to happen to all those back-end points? Well, in an interview that Jason Kyler, head of HBO Max, uh, gave to Peter Kafka, he described how basically HBO Max is going to pay a licensing fee and all the people associated with the films are going to benefit from that licensing fee. So to quote Peter Kafka, he says, quote, to spell that out, HBO Max, a unit of Warner Media, will pay Warner Brothers a unit of Warner Media and the talent in these movies will get a slice of that in the same way that they get a slice of theatrical distribution dollars. And Jason Kyler says, that's exactly right. That is what the model is going to be in the, in the sense that like the, the licensing fee is going to be what the theatrical fee would have been. But are people happy with that? Like, is it a lot? Is it a little? Is it too much? Is it not enough? We don't know right now. Um, it's possible that everyone's going to be super happy with it. It's possible that no one's going to be happy with it. Uh, but I think whether or not the producers, the actors, the filmmakers, all those people are happy with it is going to determine whether Warner Brothers, Warner Media is still going to be making big budget blockbuster films of the kind they have been making for the last few decades uh, in the future. So we will see. Let's talk about the third group that's going to be impacted by this decision, and that is streaming services. Now, Streaming services are in a battle right now to get as much high value content that consumers are gonna want as quickly as possible. And this is very evident when you see headlines like about the new James Bond, No Time to Die, and how a streaming service almost paid $600 million uh, to get that title. Uh, and so people really want the hottest content, the content people are most gonna wanna see that's most gonna want them to subscribe to a streaming service. And this really, uh, kind of changes the game in terms of what people will expect from a streaming service, at least for the short term. Because again, those movies are going to run out at some point, right? So I am curious how this will intensify the battle between services uh, for content, whether some services are going to want to spend even more money to get the movies onto their platform. Uh, I am curious how different services will begin to position themselves. Uh, in light of what is going on right now. So I think we're going to see an evolution in the competition between streaming services. And, you know, will they position themselves as like the place to get great movies? Will they position themselves as, you know, the place to get great TV or uh, a catch-all or what have you? Like, how is their branding and positioning going to evolve? I think this really is going to be disruptive to that space. So that's group number three. And finally, the fourth group that's going to be impacted, you and me. 
consumers, the viewers. One of the big questions is, will people still want to go to theaters after the pandemic is over? I think personally that theaters will still exist after the pandemic is over, but they're going to become more specialized. They're going to be like roller rinks or bowling alleys. You can still go to roller rinks and bowling alleys, but uh, it's not like they're ubiquitous. It's not like they're in every single mall anymore uh, because consumers and particularly the next younger generation coming up will have been conditioned to no longer go to movie theaters, especially with this pandemic happening right now and everything. Uh, so I am fearful already for where the theatrical film going industry is going, because uh, that's a pretty bleak future for theatrical film going that I just outlined. But I, I think that's probably where it's going, even though I love going to movie theaters. But the big question for this HBO Max deal is, is it going to change what people's expectations are for going to movies? Will they be conditioned to no longer go to movies, right? Will this create a domino effect where like other streaming services and other uh, big studios like start putting their movies straight onto the platform and we destroy the theatrical window and going to movies no longer feel special after 2021? Who knows? But I am curious to see what consumer behavior is gonna be like. Are people still gonna be willing to one day in the future get the babysitter? spend money on the parking, spend money on the, you know, concessions, spend like basically $150 for one night at the movies, or are they just going to turn on their, you know, LED or OLED TV and fire up the Roku stick and HBO Max or whatever service is there, and they're good? Unclear, but I think it's a big open question as a result of this big move that Warner Media and HBO Max has made. But as a fan of movies, I have to say, I'm really excited. Now, those of you who have followed this channel, who follow my work online, know that I agonized over whether or not to watch Tenet this year in theaters, which by the way, was a Warner Brothers movie. And now uh, I don't need to agonize anymore because I know that these movies, like The Suicide Squad, like Dune, like The Matrix 4, The Matrix 4, a sequel to The Matrix Trilogy, we're gonna be able to watch it at home on HBO Max. That is incredible. I am so excited about that. It actually brings me as a consumer a lot of joy because uh, I'm really excited to see like all these different stories play out and evolve from like great directors. And it's just a really exciting time that 2021 is gonna be for movie watching. For theatrical film going, it could be really, really bad. It could be really dark. Um, but as somebody who just loves movies and just you wanna watch them however you can watch them, uh, it could be really, really great. So it is one thing in 2021 that we can look forward to. All right, those are my thoughts on the whole HBO Max situation. Curious what you think. Again, are there any movies you are most excited to watch? Uh, if so, leave a comment below. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and you will be sure to receive any updates to my channel as they arise. I also want to thank all my patrons at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Without them, I couldn't be having this YouTube channel. I couldn't have my podcast, Culturally Relevant, where I interview filmmakers, directors, and other interesting people from around the internet. Uh, so thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it informative or thought-provoking. And I will see you in the next one.